Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another launching video. So, in today's video, I wanted to make this video to help you guys out uh, invest in these top 10 mythics that I think are the best attackers right now at uh, the time of recording this. So, these 10 are going to be the top 10 that I think that you should actually invest in at the moment, rank up or craft or just spend gems in. You know what I mean? These monsters are going to be the top 10 at the moment. So, if you guys would like to know what those top 10 monsters are, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know in just a few seconds. But before we get started, it would be appreciated if you guys could drop a like subscribe if you're new anyways let's go ahead and get started now there are so many monsters right now in the game so many attackers but i wanted to um add in the top 10 obviously that i think are the best now there are some monsters like teddy bomb for example but that's more of a denier i know some players tend to use it as an attacker like me personally i use him as an attacker sometimes but the thing is i didn't want to add it into this list but if you would like to invest in him he's actually pretty good and you can go ahead and use him as an attacker or denier if you want to but i just didn't add it into this list just letting you guys know and there are a couple of monsters out there obviously but anyways the first one that i wanted to um go ahead and let you guys know about so we're gonna start off from top 10 to top one so 10 being like good but top one being the best if that makes sense now most of these are not in order so just letting you guys know i don't want to you know upset any of you guys out there in the comments you're like oh uh, i wanted this monster to be higher i think he's higher than this one well most of them are not in order except maybe like the top five or something so top 10 let's go ahead and get into this so the 10th monster that i think oh we just matched down chaos cool so anyways the top 10th monster that um i think you should actually invest in and he's a pretty good as an attacker is obviously calamatibus so this mythic is actually amazing let's just say okay you can use him in for example, you know, PvP if you want to, but he's mainly good in Team Wars. Now, I just need to find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this monster, I, you know, I maxed him out recently for important war. We ended up winning by two coins, and it was against champs. So this monster is really good, heads very heavily, has cursed countdown skills, has, you know, chances of eliminating the enemy instantly, which is pretty good, right? Removing life by percentage as well. Um, and it's just overall so nice. So you can use this monster as, like, triple speed, just to take in the first turn and have a chance to eliminate the enemy straight away or you can go ahead and obviously run him as an attacker purely for example you can run in some of the other skills that just deals damage like for example this one but i just tend to use these four skills i think they're the best um so overall just pretty good it's just the only thing that i don't really like much is a trait but other than that the monster is really good hits very heavily and right now you guys know cupid and serpentix are like the main meta right now on pvp and team wars right so it's pretty good having a water monster that will deal so much damage to them now ladies and gentlemen there's going to be many pierce attackers in this list just letting you guys know but i wanted to add this monster on the ninth spot because i think that it's not a must-have pierce attacker but it's still pretty good if you pair it up with like a monster that gives like status because they're torture immunity or something because the only thing that really sucks about this monster the only thing that really bothers me is the fact that he has it as uh he has pierce at rank 5 status caster by the way you have to actually rank it up to rank 5 in order to actually get that pure status caster but once you get it you can't really apply it so once that thing runs out you cannot reapply it sadly and if you end up getting nanovirus the only thing you could do is just use your normal skills just like a normal attacker but if you do use them correctly uh you know let's say pair it up against with uh torture immunity somebody that gets size torture immunity or something like that so you can actually keep that pierce um for the most part and he's he's more of like a let's just say maybe defense monster i would say for let's say team wars on pvp there are better pierce attackers obviously i didn't pick him up because i just didn't want to there are many monsters that i have in the metal and thunder book that i can use as an attacker so i just didn't really invest in him and i just I don't know the monster is good but i wouldn't say it's the best pierce attacker so if you do have them you can invest in him but continue watching because there's going to be more pierce monsters later on this list that you will most likely want to rank up as well now we're going to be going into the blossom category and here is the top eight monster that i think you should actually invest in as an attacker and that is the last attacker for the blossom era this little shrimp guy yeah uh he looks like he can't really do much but trust me he can do a lot all right so let me go ahead and find this monster for you guys so this mythic first of all trait wise amazing right you have so many things going on such as your drowned that pretty good against water monsters or sorry fire monsters dealing more damage because torture you know uh sets because self dodge area as well so you do have access to dodge area single targets will only hit you um if you do want to reapply the dodge area i believe he does have a skill that yep helps him basically reapply it's basically like grag shack but like a blossom mythic version a more updated version of him basically what is this thing 
Oh yeah, it's oh that's cool. It tells you the roll. Anyways, so this monster has PR skills, deals so much damage. I mean, look at that damage output right there. It's insane. Comes with many tortures as well. Has more PR skills, obviously, um, and has an extra turn if you want to run that. And obviously, the double damage that you can actually go ahead and use, and you know, uh, you know, just helping you boost your damage. And I just really like this monster overall. It has SN and sword pretty good for attacker you know what i mean um so overall very good monster to invest in and especially the fact that he is double elements and also light light is pretty good against the current meta right I, well for many dark monsters yeah but think about water cupid serpentix yeah so that's pretty good and now we're gonna jump back into the galactic era because this is another monster that you do not want to miss out on and you can still obtain him right now you can either get him rank zero rank three or rank five obviously so that is obviously drag bite uh pretty good against the current bounty hunt monster you know dealing a lot of damage even insta killing i already made a short made a bunch of videos on it showed it off in streams um so check those out if you haven't already but yeah this monster has bleed hater very good so if you end up applying bleeding to an enemy i believe he does have some bleeding skills right here which one is that right here so you apply bleeding and he has bleed hater he can deal so much damage uh you have cold blood bypassing taunt and megaton it's kind of like a walmart pierce um and then you have tough trade not bad random elemental hitter you can actually get lucky with that um so in defense that's gonna really throw off the enemy if they don't have like a really good strategy that will definitely throw them off such as yourself precision so you don't miss so very good overall i would say um pretty good for the dark category because there are some earth monsters that are meta um for example ural ural will literally just get dominated by this monster because remember you do have access to that cold blood so if they don't trade table you you will basically eliminate ural one shot without any damage boost at all because dark against earth and obviously he hits pretty heavily look at those skills the damage outputs it's pretty insane um so pretty good overall i've got to say that's why i wanted to add it into the list as well now for number six in the category we're going into metro era and i'm sure many of you guys could guess who this is can you guess no well here it is dark voltaic yes dark voltaic is amazing still usable up to this day even though it was from the metro era this monster just dominates in team wars even pvp you can still use it in pvp if you want to has access to dodge area can basically reapply the dodge area as well with this skill right here resentment fog which actually uh, also applies dark weakness to all enemies has a bunch of extra turn skills so you can basically spam infinitely and if you do get hit with cooldown activation that's completely fine because you can continue spamming dark assault until these other ones come in cooldown again as long as you have stamina so if you have stamina you can never ever ever um stop attacking with this monster pretty good the best one of the best uh, spammers right now in the game and if you are looking for one this would be the best uh, to actually invest in i know there's many other ones and there is one in the list i'm sure you guys will guess who it is but um yeah dark category now i know you gotta watch it from serpentix and cupid and all but it's mainly like a Team Wars monster, although again, PvP is pretty good too, but mainly a Team Wars monster. Now for the top five, these are somewhat in order, okay? So we're going into the Doom category, and it is a Pierce attacker, obviously. The last Pierce attacker, Elfira. So Elfira hits very heavily, um, has anticipation, which, which is very nice. Sash is self-precision, so you don't miss. And then also you know satisfies their peers now there are some other bonuses like immune to possession immune to blind so they you know this monster doesn't get controlled by that um but i really like the fact that it has the status of peers and he's not like she's not like harp hiker which uh once you lose your peers you just lose it forever but this monster actually can reapply it basically as you guys can see aim for weakness it applies dark weakness and then deals a lot of damage and stuff like that pierce well applies it, it deals the damage first and then dark weakness it would be more op if it was actually dark weakness and then deals heavy dark damage can you imagine that uh but the monster hits very heavily has life by percentage removal as well now this is her, her best skill and most of the time you just take down the enemy with it which is amazing has damage boost with an extra turn skill has more more pierce skills with double damage it's just amazing so if you need a pierce attacker um i would recommend investing in her rather than investing in harp hiker even though harp hiker is actually in the galactic era and this monster is from doomed era it's just that this monster is a better option all right so again if you are looking for a good pierce attacker i'd recommend investing in her now the top four monster that i kind of wanted to mention uh she's more of a support but i I'm pretty sure many of you guys do use her as an attacker more. I personally use her as an attacker, and that is Naya, obviously. This monster can spam infinitely, basically, if you actually cycle her skills correctly. Has a bunch of NER skills. Well, actually, I think only two NER skills, right? Uh, but I tend to use the one that actually just gives the extra turn. Um, but it has stamina regen, so it helps you a few turns, you know what I mean, before you use your actual stamina. Um, then you have dodge area. Very good. I mean, 
you know, ten, you, you could basically pair this monster up with like Yurl on the side, so double dodge area, and then you have your taunt using this monster as an attacker. Now, I know many of you guys use her maybe as a supporter, but I personally use him as an attacker, her as an attacker, and she's just amazing. And you guys can let me know in the comments below what you actually use Naya as if you do own her. What do you use her as? Attacker or supporter? I'm sure many of you guys will say attacker. It's just better to use as an attacker. Um, but it has double damage skills that you can use it as a supporter. So basically, you're getting two and one, which is pretty good, right? And uh, she can basically cycle infinitely, like I said. So very good. Um, has PR skill, AOE, and it comes with mana virus. Um, so overall, one of the one of the best attackers, one of the best uh, spammer attackers. Um, if I had to choose between her and Voltic, I'd probably ha have to go with her because you have the trait dodge area. Voltic has it as a status caster, so that runs out, has two element skills, and is more up to date in terms of stats and everything, you know what I mean? So, I'll go with Naya. Now we're going to enter the top three, and obviously we're going to Galactic again, we're going to hop back into it. So, this is the next monster that I need you guys to invest in, and this monster will be a meta for a very long time, has a access to dodge area, which is very nice, and patient hater as a trait, by the way, so you don't really... It's not like a status caster that just runs out of, after a few turns. You have precision, so you don't miss out any of your skills. And status caster, area ignite, pretty good against nature monsters and stuff like that. Um, but overall, the monster is amazing. I already, you know, ranked it up to rank three, and I'm still taking her, taking him to the dungeons, so I can actually rank him up a little more. Um, I just think that that would be faster than actually ranking up the other monsters altogether and then getting the cells from the book. But once you get the rank zero, you know, just the 100 cells enough, take it to the um, what's it called. Take it to the rank up survival dungeon and start investing. This monster is amazing. Um, so very good uh, because it has anticipation hitter and basically triple damage against any anticipation monster. Galvanus is meta right now, so you'll deal triple damage against that. And Galvanus actually applies anticipation to everybody, so you're going to be hurting him and his team the whole like just a lot. So very nice, right? You also have access to dark and fire, obviously, as in terms of skills. He has PER skill. There's so many things. Cold blood, even double damage, positive effect protection. It's just amazing. And the fact that he actually has a zero stamina one turn cooldown insane fire damage which is amazing and a zero cooldown 50 stamina so a spammable um skill that's massive fire damage uh and always you can stamina you can just use um, a mask that will regenerate your stamina such as for example tetraman's mask torbox mask and whatever so overall very good and that's why i wanted to add it in the top three now ladies and gentlemen for the top two before i actually get into the top two i do want to mention i really wanted to add jagar into this list because this monster is still usable it, it hits very heavily and if anything i would actually re-edit this list and probably add this monster into the list with harpiker either investing in harpiker or jagar if i had to choose between one of the two i'd probably go with jagar even though the stats aren't as up to date with uh, harpiker but it does have access to aoe skills something that harpiker can't do and also can basically use that pure skill and harpiker once it once he runs out of that pure skill can't really use it or if you get hit with nanovirus or something you know what i mean and that nanovirus goes away but you don't have your pierce this monster can actually reapply that pierce as a skill has magic weakness as well so you can deal a lot more damage you know what i mean so jagar would be one of your options to rank up but anyways now the top two guys all right so top two let's go and that will be cupid now, I wanted to add Cupid into this list, obviously, because you have Pierce. Pierce is really good right now. Bulwark, and it has been for a very long time since the monster got released, and before that, a while back, like Vanilla States, remember that? Crazy. Uh, Sunburn, you know, everybody gets a torture, and it goes through Megaton as well, so everybody actually gets hit with it. Uh, cooldown immunity, so in case if anybody tries to hit you with CDA, they're, have, they're gonna have to PER this, or wait for it to run out. Uh, but you don't want to wait for it to run out, because this monster will destroy you all right so yeah um this monster it's kind of scary uh don't well you gotta have a really nice plan a uh, nice strategy when you're going up against this monster or else you're gonna get destroyed by him spamming these aoe skills or sorry single target skills he has three single target skills that you can kind of cycle in a way they're all three turn cooldown but you can't cycle it forever obviously so you use a three and then you have to use one of the um aoe skills and overall the monster is actually not that bad um i wanted to add it into the top two list instead because there's a top one that's even better spare destiny goes very well against for example you know Ural or any other resurrectors that tries to resurrect so that's very nice you can even give it an anticipation cloak uh ancient cloak sorry which gives you anticipation so that's 
another bonus because Doom Talents are very, very strong, very nice. Um, you can even give a Dragon Soul, Seven Sins. There's so many things that you can play around with. So that's why I wanted to add it into the top two list. Now, I'm sure many of you guys know what the top one monster is going to be. And that is in the Blossom category. So you have to scroll down a little bit. Not too much. Where the heck is it? Here we go. Top 1000 monster that was released a while back. And this monster is just so good. It's literally like Cupid, but better. I would say a better version of Cupid. And I know some of you guys will probably disagree with me, but I personally like Serpentix more than Cupid. Um, so it just really depends on the scenario sometimes because you might need to, like if you're going up against Ural in a team war battle, you'd use Cupid over just in case if you want to do Sphere of Destiny. So Cupid doesn't resurrect. But for most cases, I'd probably go with Serpentix. You know what I mean? Abomination Hater. There's so many Abomination monsters that were released in this era as well. So basically, triple damage. You just destroy them. Has Pierce just like that other monster. Cooldown Immunity is a trait, by the way. Not as a status catcher like Cupid. Area Poison basically making the enemy weak. Um, and the monster is just very good overall because look at this. So we have Abomination, massive fire damage. Comes with two torches on top of that, which is very nice. And um, there's also a AoE poison a triple damage and although it does apply vulnerability to itself but i mean for the most part it, it works out for him you get the abomination hater skill mirror triple damage and so on so overall the monster is very very good and it just it's probably the best attacker right now in the game i would say so at the time of recording this these are the top 10 monsters that i would recommend investing guys so i hope this video was helpful and i hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure you drop a like subscribe share with your friends you know what i mean it might help them out as well so anyways i'll see you guys in the next one peace out